week after week after week and, and stayed on that, that, um, that uh, along that same structure. Once in a great while, I had a series that I would follow. Um, I've probably preached more series since I've been here uh, in Renton than I did anywhere uh, anywhere else that I have pastored. Um, and I believe it's because God is trying to steer us in a particular direction. And I'm excited about that because we know that if we follow the Lord, that he's going to lead us in the direction that we should go. Amen? Amen. So um, tonight we're going to cover um, the final vessel, and that is the vessel of wrath. The vessel of wrath. Romans chapter 9, verse 22, if you have your Bibles with, me, with you tonight. Terry, you can use your phone. Oh, never mind. Um, <laughs> so thank you, Brother Manuel, for sacrificing life and limb. Uh, to try and rescue my wife's phone. Um, all that has done is it's cost me money. Thank you. Um, and uh, <laughs> so, um, vessels of wrath. Let's take a look uh, here tonight in Romans chapter 9, verse 22. Let's see what the scripture has to say. What if God, willing to show his wrath, to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? When a broken vessel refuses to accept the blood administered by the potter, let me stop, I'll take a step back. I'll remind us of this morning where we talked about the broken vessel. Remember the broken vessel, even though the broken vessel is broken, even though it's damaged, a broken vessel was not immediately discarded. Okay? A broken vessel still in the hands of the potter had the ability to be repaired. How did he repair it? He would go out into the potter's field. He would collect um, small insects that were like a tick. These ticks lived off of the blood of bulls and goats. So they would collect these ticks. They would bring them back, and they would mash up these ticks into the um, clay dust, and they would create a paste. And, and, and in essence, what they were creating, they were creating a glue. Then they would apply that to the cracks. Once they, they had filled all the cracks at, uh, of the broken vessel, then they would put that broken vessel back into the fire. And when, the, when it came out of the fire, that uh, if it accepted the glue, if it accepted it, then that vessel was restored back into an operational vessel. Tonight, what we are dealing with, or we are dealing specifically with vessels of wrath. These vessels of wrath Though they, they started out broken, they refused to accept the blood that was administered by the potter. It becomes a vessel of wrath. The problem is not that the blood has failed. Everyone say amen. amen. Ladies and gentlemen, whether it's your life or it's been the life of one that you know, somebody that turns their back on the Lord and Brother Anthony stops serving God for whatever reason, whatever difficulty they have gone through, but they choose to stop serving the Lord, Sheila, the reality of it is the blood did not fail them. The blood that Jesus shed did not fail those individuals. God has never left anybody hanging in the wind. Amen? He's never let them down. The Bible says that he said he would never leave us nor forsake us. He is not only faithful, remember we talked about it this morning, he's not only faithful, but he is also a just God. Amen? And so we need to understand tonight that if the vessel refuses to accept the blood that has been applied, it, it refuses to accept the repair process, then it becomes a vessel of wrath. The problem is not that the blood has failed. The problem is the vessel has refused it. God's only remedy for a fallen man is the shed blood of his son, Jesus Christ. Would you agree? There is no other way unto salvation, amen? But through Jesus Christ, we have to admit we are broken and we need to be restored. And remember, you cannot be restored. A clean vessel cannot be restored unless it's taken back to the potter. On the outside, it looks like a good vessel. But remember, on the inside, the film that developed on the inside tainted the water. It created a taste in the water that damaged the, the ability to, to do what the water was uh, meant to do. When a vessel is broken, understand, 
When a vessel is broken, it does not mean that the potter will discard it. There still is a restoration process, but it, it is then up to the vessel to receive that blood, to receive the remedy. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 5, verse 9, Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath. How? Through him. That's when we have that, that scripture. There we go. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. The only way that we are saved from wrath is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Everyone that makes heaven will go there one way, one way, and that is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. There is no other way to make it to heaven. If a person refuses the blood, they have sealed their own fate. The wrath of the potter. Amen? All right, let's take a look at this for a second. The potter has complete power over the clay. Amen? The Bible clearly says he has the ability to make a vessel unto honor or unto dishonor. He has the ability to recreate or, or to reconcile or to reconstruct or to restore. God, the potter, has the ability to do that. That restoration process is not an easy process. Anyone ever been through that restoration process? Have you ever... Had to go through the scrubbing and the brushing. Have you ever had to go through the scraping? Amen? Okay, I guess I'm the only one in the building that's ever had to go through that. But let me tell you something. It's not an enjoyable process. And in every situation, remember, in every one of these vessels that we have addressed, what do they eventually have to do? Anybody know? Say it real loud. They have to go through the fire. Understand something here tonight, folks. Whether you are a vessel of honor, whether you are a vessel of mercy, whether you are a chosen vessel, whether you are a, a clean vessel, whether you are a vessel of dishonor, whether you are a vessel of wrath, or whether you are a broken vessel, in every single situation, for us to be what God created us to be, we will have to go through the fire. Amen? But it's not, Brother Solomon, because... As I said this morning, that God is trying to destroy us with the fire. Quite the opposite. He's trying to remove the impurities in our life. So when you go through that fiery trial, anyone ever been there? Anybody going through one right now? And you don't have to raise your hand. It's okay. When you're going through that fiery trial, rather than think that God is somehow forsaking you, Rather than wonder why God is allowing this to happen to you, why don't you be thankful that God has chosen to remove an impurity in your life? You see, if we look at it from that perspective, we realize that the potter truly has taken power over the clay. Amen? He, remember, we were all created as chosen vessels. God has put his mark upon us. Amen? Many are called, but what? Few are chosen. There was many vessels made. Just some we, when, we, when we started in this, we realized that everything was created to be a vessel of honor. Everything. Okay? The, but the vessel of honor had a very distinct purpose. It was to carry water. Amen? There was another portion. It became a vessel of mercy. And we, and we know. I don't want to have to go back and, and, and rehearse all of it again. But I want us to realize that all of these vessels that were created had a very distinct purpose. But the Bible clearly tells us that those chosen vessels was very unique. Amen. There are many that are called today out in the world. There are many that the call of Christ has gone into the hearts of people. But few have chosen. When we think about the population, few, Anthony, have chosen to be part of what God wants them to be. Amen. And how many do you think out there, in, in just written, as I was sitting there today in the restaurant with, uh, with Pastor Edmund and, and, and his cousin, we were sitting there, and I was thinking, all of the people that were sitting around us, and how many of those people, how many of those people had been called on, uh, had been called on by God? How many of those people has the Lord tried to reach out to, and Brother Manuel, they refused that call? They refuse to accept the blood. They're damaged. They're hurting. Some of them are clean, but, but they're, they're tainted. They're cynical about church. They've been damaged in church. Some of them are broken. Some of them have become simply garbage dumps. And yet God, in all of his wisdom, 
still reaches out to them in hopes that they will turn and come back to him. Why? Because God has a desire to use each and every one of you sitting here tonight for a very distinct purpose. He has chosen you to be able to reach a, a people group that nobody else can reach. Do you know that? Why in the, I, I ask the question, why in the world would I go to, would God call me to go over to Belgium where I don't speak French? I've never been to Europe. Why would he have me go over there? And what, what would be the purpose of this? But even Pastor Edmund today could not steer away from that in all of our conversation. He kept going back to the fact that God has crossed our paths. Remember, you've heard me say this many times in this church, and I believe it to be so. And that is God will put you in the path of people who are able to release anointing in your life. For what purpose? For the purpose of expanding the kingdom of God. So whether it is in a foreign country or whether it is right here, whether it's on your job, remember that the, these vessels cover the whole gamut. Remember, it's in the house of God that, that we are the vessels of honor. It is in the in the in your own home that the vessel of honor should be uh, it should be acclimated and it should be appropriated and it should be used in that in your own household to be able to minister grace into the people who come in there. The vessel of mercy goes not only into the highways and hedges, but it also goes to where the people are. That's what it's all about. I want you to know something here tonight. You were not fitted as vessels of wrath. In fact, it was because of Jesus Christ that he came to help us escape the wrath that is to come. If a person refuses the blood, they've sealed their own fate, and that is the wrath of the potter. If the broken vessel would not receive the blood, this is what took, this is what took place. The potter took it to a high wall that surrounded Jerusalem. He cast it down on the outside of the wall, never to be retrievable. Wrath is stored up for those who reject the blood of Jesus. Come on, son, keep up with me. Getting labels. If the if the broken vessel will not receive the blood, the potter will take the vessel to a high wall around Jerusalem and cast it down on the outside, on the outside, never to be retrievable, not to be used again. The point of going up to that high wall is to shatter it in pieces and it cannot be put back together. This is, this is Humpty Dumpty's story, amen? It's to break these vessels so they won't be usable again. Wrath is stored up for those who reject the blood of Christ. Let me tell you something. Once we are cast down, cast down into where? If we refuse the blood of Christ, they will be cast down into hell. And once you are cast into hell, there is no coming back. Amen. There's no getting out. The rich, or we know the story of, uh, of the rich man when he went down in there. Amen. We know the story of the rich man. First, he, he wanted Lazarus to dip his finger in water to touch his tongue because he said he was in torment. And he said, I can't do it. He can't do it. There's a great gulf. There's no way to, 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 to get across that great gulf. And so what did he say? Well, send him then. Send him to my brothers, lest they fall into the same fate. And what was the response? Well, they have the, they have the prophets. They have those who are preaching the word of God. And, you know, and, and they need to listen to them. They need to hear them. And the, and, the, and the rich man knew his family. And he knew most likely they would wind up at the same place. Well, how important is it then today for us to be the vessels that God wants us to be? The vessels of honor, the vessels of mercy that will take the living water to the people where they are at. And that, that starts with our family. It starts with our friends. It starts with our co-workers. It starts with our neighbors. Why? Because they are our Jerusalem. Amen. They are our Jerusalem. They're the ones who are closest to us. They're the ones that we can reach first and foremost. Understand that once this vessel was cast down and broken, it was broken simply because it rejected the blood. It rejected restoration. And when it was cast down, it was cast down permanently, not to be restored again. Salvation is not about religious ritual and ceremony. It is about a living, breathing relationship with your creator. The only way to have it is through Jesus Christ. Chanting, good deeds, 
Nothing can wash away sin but the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? We said it this morning. What the blood of bulls and boats, uh, bulls and goats could not do. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe boats bleed. I don't know. <laughs> um, what the blood of bulls and goats could not do is that it was weak in flesh. Who was the flesh? It was weak through the priest. It was weak through people. It could not remove the sin. It just covered it over. But because of Jesus coming, shedding his life and his life's blood once and for all, it took away sin. It provided a way, Sheila, that whatever sin that happened in your past, it, it's taken away. Whatever sin that you, that you perhaps um, transgress against the Lord's uh, will today, we have an advocate, which is Christ. We can turn to him. We can ask for his forgiveness. We can ask him to apply the blood, and it will remove that sin. Amen? This is the hope we have, and this is the hope that we share with the lost world. They're looking to politics. They're looking to people. They're looking to all kinds of things to try and rectify their problems. People were buying lottery tickets in the hopes of, of, of getting themselves out of debt, in the hopes of changing their life for the better, and all of those types of things. But if that's where we're looking to rectify our problems in life, we're looking in the wrong direction. If we will look to Jesus Christ, whether we are paupers, whether we sit out in front of the gate begging every single day, or whether we have riches untold, the reality of it is, uh, Solomon put it this way, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Love God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. I love that scripture, because really when it all boils down to, when everything is all gone, and everything, and, and the dust is settled on your life, it's going to come down to Two things. Did you love God with all your heart? And did you serve Him with all your heart? Because that's our duty. That's what we were created to do. Brother Manuel, he's made this thing so simple for us. Living a Christian life is not a hard thing to do. It's filled with choices. Filled with choices. Every day we make choices. Do we choose to be obedient or do we choose to be disobedient? Do you choose to be a vessel of honor, or do you choose to be a vessel of dishonor? Do you choose to be a vessel that can bring glory to God, or are you going to allow the things of life to attach themselves to you that taints your witness? If you're broken, if you're a clean vessel and, you're, and your witness is tainted, we can go back to the potter and allow God to do the things to us and in us to help us to be everything he wants us to be. Salvation is not about a religious ritual. It's about the blood of Jesus Christ. Water baptism or sprinkling will not get you into heaven. Your mama's prayers will not get you into heaven. You must place your faith in Jesus Christ. Every one of us in here tonight, we must surrender our life wholly into the hands of the Lord. In closing, wow, record time, huh? In closing tonight, I want to share this, this final thought. There are many vessels in the church that need restoration. Many. Many on the outside show that we look like vessels of honor. The clean vessel looked like a vessel of honor. But because of the stuff that had accumulated on it, because of the wear of life, it had been become ineffective. And it's only through the restoration process that the Lord can bring us to a place where we will be pleasing to him. There are many vessels in the church that need restoration, but we've got to be willing to go back to the Lord and allow him to do what he needs to. For some of us, it's going to be a scraping process. For some of us, it's going to be a brushing process. For some of us, it's going to be repairing the chips and the nicks. For some of us, we're broken. Some of us are broken. That's how we feel right there. And we look at that and we say, that's not even a usable vessel. And most people, amen, most people would look at that and say, that's not even usable. But to a potter, he looks at that and says, well, I can fix that. He can fix that. He knows the process. Amen? And because he knows the process, when he looks at your life, it, regardless of how you feel things are happening in your life, I want you to know we serve a God that can fix whatever ails you. Amen. Amen.
It don't matter what's, what has transpired. It doesn't matter the winds that are blowing against your life. It doesn't matter the difficulties that you are facing. Understand that when the potter sees you, he sees you as a repairable vessel. Why? Because you're chosen. Because he's written his name on your life. Amen? The process most likely will not begin and end at an altar today. But, or it, it may not end at an altar today, but it certainly can begin. Amen? We don't do this a lot. I don't know why we don't do it a lot. But I think that it would be foolish for us to preach a series such as this. And know, in all reality, that many of us that are sitting here today are facing some of the same circumstances that we have preached about for the last several weeks. Some of you are, you're fine, you're vessels of honor, you're vessels of mercy, you're doing all the things that you need to do, but understand the dangers. Understand the dangers. You can become tainted. It doesn't say that the vessel wanted to become tainted. Amen? It didn't even say that it was doing anything wrong to become tainted. So understand that tainted does not mean you're sinning you're doing something wrong. It simply means life is affecting you. And Sister Stephanie, you got here just in time to hear the last remarks of the message and we're going to have prayer. You got here at the perfect time. So understand, folks, please understand that if you, if you see yourself in that category as a clean vessel, you say, well, man, I'm tainted. Sometimes I'm angry. Sometimes I'm frustrated. I'm bitter. Sometimes things come out of my mouth that they shouldn't come out. It's just a process. Just go back to the potter. You'll fix it. Amen? Some of you this morning or this evening, you feel like you're broken. You feel like you've gone through a difficult situation in your life and you're facing a difficult decision in your life and you feel like you're marred, you're chipped, you're war, you're broken. Please don't give up hope because the potter has the remedy for your life. He can fix you. Amen? He can fix you. I want everybody to realize tonight that you are chosen. Sheila, you're chosen. He has written his name on you. You know that? Brother Manuel, you're chosen. Today may be, everything may be going well, but tomorrow's a different day. And tomorrow, if you face a difficulty, you need to know I'm chosen. I have been made for a distinct purpose. Sister Solomon, no matter what the cares of life, no matter the difficulties that you face, and, and, and you will face in the days ahead, no matter what those situations are, you're chosen. God has handpicked you. He created you. He knows everything about you. And he, he finds so much value in you that he has written his name upon you. The devil knows this, folks. Because he knows this, this is why he attacks us so hard. Because of this, he is not going to back off. You know what he wants? He wants you to become a vessel of wrath. One that rejects the blood of Christ. One that rejects the, the, the process, the restoration process. Simply so you can be cast down just like him. Because remember, that's what happened to Lucifer. Right? He was cast down out of heaven. Amen. You know why? Because he refused to be accepted by the Lord. He refused. He refused God's graciousness towards him, though he was created, the Bible says, perfect in all of his ways. Until, until something found was found inside of him that was displeasing to the Lord. Well, maybe that's us. Maybe we have discovered through this series that there might be some things in us that need to be corrected, and that's okay. That's okay, because I'm here to tell you we serve a God that can fix whatever problem.